Welcome to a special edition of the Bear Astro. We're going to photograph the Andromeda Galaxy, but I feel like something's telling me not to photograph it. Anyway, I must be quick. I've got to go. Tonight we're going to be photographing the Andromeda Galaxy. I cannot wait. Beautiful big galaxy. I've... Did I just see something? We're going to be photographing the Andromeda Galaxy and um, I cannot wait. My telescope setup is ready and the sky is clear and it's going to be beautiful. The Andromeda Galaxy is an amazing galaxy in the sky. <laughs> you shall not photograph Andromeda. I am the ghost of Cassiopeia, and you shall photograph me. Otherwise, forever have bad guiding, USB problems, Windows updates, and out of focus photographs. <laughs> Well, we can't be having that. Let's take a photograph of the ghost of Cassiopeia. For the ghost of Cassiopeia, we're going to be using a monochrome camera, a hydrogen alpha filter because it's an emission nebula, and red, green and blue filters to capture all the rest of the colour and the beautiful star field. Let's get to photographing it. The ghost of Cassiopeia is a nebula located around 550 light years away in the constellation of Cassiopeia. It's a beautiful target being bombarded by ultraviolet radiation coming from Gamma Cassiopeiae. This is one of the stars that makes up the W shape in the constellation of Cassiopeia. It's the middle peak of the W so it's very easy to find if you want to photograph it or maybe try and find it visually. Gamma Cassiopeiae is a massive star. It's around 65,000 times brighter than our own sun. It also spins at an incredible speed of 1.6 million kilometers an hour. The ultraviolet radiation that's bombarding IC63 is making the electrons gain energy and releasing it into hydrogen alpha gas. The ghost of Cassiopeia is also a reflection nebula, which is really quite cool. Reflection and emission, so we get some nice blue hues and red. This reflection is because the star that's illuminating it is so bright that is also reflecting some of its light. When it comes to imaging, this target is quite bright, so it's actually quite easy to photograph. The problem, however, is the difficulty of the sheer brightness of the star that's illuminating this nebula. Due to the brightness of the star that illuminates this nebula, it can cause some really bad reflections with some filters and optical setups. This makes it quite tricky to actually photograph on some setups. A lot of people end up just cropping out the region with the star to try and avoid reflections. I'm photographing both hydrogen alpha and RGB data and we're currently in a waning lunar phase. When the moon is up I'm capturing the hydrogen alpha and when the moon is low or in a lower lunar phase I'm going to be capturing the red, green and blue data. Over the next few nights I'll be capturing hours and hours and I'll piece them together to produce one final image. Unfortunately looking at my hydrogen alpha data I captured last night it looks like I have some pretty bad reflection issues in my optical setup. We'll see how the final stack comes out and whether we'll have to do any post-processing to get rid of those reflections. So let's have a look at that early hydrogen alpha detail and see what this magical ghost looks like up close. 
So here we have the hydrogen alpha data of the ghost of Cassiopeia. We can see the ghost on the right hand side of the image. And in the top left we've got Gamma Cassiopeiae, which is bombarding this nebula with ultraviolet radiation leading to it emitting the hydrogen alpha light we can see here. If we go to a starless version of the image, we can see unfortunately we have some pretty severe reflections. We can see the secondary obstruction with the spider veins and multiple reflections in the top right, in the mid left and also here on the middle right. This is probably the coma corrector mixed with the filters but when I have off axis light from a bright star this is usually a problem on my setup. But this area of sky is notorious for difficulties. However I don't think this is too bad. This should be quite easy to remove if I choose to do so. So let's have a closer look at this nebula. The detail is absolutely incredible. If we have a look at this billowing cloud-like structure, it is just amazing to look at these nebula up close. So let's have a look at the red, green and blue data and see how it compares to the hydrogen alpha. So here we have the red, green and blue data of the ghost of Cassiopeia. Despite only using a red filter, the hydrogen alpha emission light of the ghost of Cassiopeia is bright enough that it comes up with quite a lot of detail just with a red filter. So if you plan to photograph this target, don't think you need a hydrogen alpha filter to capture it, although it will be able to reveal much more detailed structures by using a dedicated hydrogen alpha filter. If we go over to the green filter, we can see that the gamma Cassiopeia is much brighter and also causes a slight gradient across the image. We also have some detail and structure in IC63. If we go over to the blue filter we can see that the star is so much brighter because it is a blue star, so the blue filter is going to pick up more light. And we can also see that there is more detail and structure in the bottom area of the target. So let's combine the hydrogen alpha, blue, green and red filters together to see the full final image. So the ghost of Cassiopeia has been captured. Maybe it will leave me alone until next Halloween season. I hope you've all enjoyed this special edition of Bebo Astro and the end photo of the ghost of Cassiopeia. And as always, my name's Ben. You've been watching Bebo Astro and keep looking up. Ooh.